Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video and supporting the channel. As a Sony user, I've had the biggest itch to scratch to switch to Fujifilm for my photography. And at the end of 2023, I got the opportunity to test out the Fujifilm X-T5 along with their 16mm and the 33mm f1.4 prime lens. So over the course of this video, I'd like to explain a few reasons why I'm partially switching by selling the Sony a6700 for the Fujifilm X-T5 and hopefully help you guys out if you are in a similar position and you're considering changing systems. So let's just jump right into it. So quickly a quick backstory to put my position into perspective. I am a full-time photographer and filmmaker based in the Gold Coast of Australia and I do a lot of brand and commercial work and last year I actually shot 79 weddings. I personally own three Sony a7IVs and FX30, this Sony a6700 along with multiple different zoom and prime lenses for the Sony E-mount system. And with opportunities through this YouTube channel, I've had the pleasure to test out multiple different Fujifilm cameras like the X100F, the X-E4, the X-T4. And while I was in Japan, I actually picked up this Fujifilm X-A5 and I'll be talking about this camera later in the video. And I've always loved the user experience of Fujifilm cameras and there's definitely a certain look that you get out of their sensors in terms of their colors and maybe that's because of the x-trans sensor i'm not really a hundred percent a technical guy so i'm not really sure all i know is that i really do enjoy the colors coming out of fujifilm's raw files but all of these previous models that i've tested have had two major flaws. The first one is slow and inaccurate autofocus. And I also think that these older Fujifilm cameras have pretty poor video quality when you compare them to Sony. But Fujifilm have fixed all of my problems with their X-T5. And now I think this camera is perfect for me. So what I love about the Fujifilm X-T5, it has that fantastic 48 megapixel APS-C size sensor. You know, you're gonna get a lot more room for cropping, a lot more resolution and a sharper result than a lower megapixel APS-C camera. With that 40 megapixel sensor, you do actually get a con and that is the slow buffer internally in the camera. You do get a fast burst rate but the camera is not fast enough to send it to the card, so you hit a buffer. Now I was using the fastest SD cards that you can get, which are these Prograde V90 cards. The autofocus is okay. The AF tracking is definitely not what Sony and Canon have, but in most use case scenarios for photography and video, I think it's okay and it's good enough for me. I really enjoy the different film simulations and I'm going to be elaborating on this point at the end of the video and I really enjoy the F-Log too, you know, I think this is a fantastic log profile, it color grades really nice and I can push and pull my white balance and exposure just like on S-Log3. The image stabilization is great for photo and video, it also is weather sealed so you can pair that with their weather sealed lenses and it also has a max shutter of 1 over 8000, which has been my biggest complaint from the Sony a6700, which only has 1 over 4000 with the mechanical shutter. The build is a fantastic integration between a pro body and a compact everyday camera. Now it is still quite slim and compact, but when you actually hold the camera, it does feel really nice in the hand and you could slap a big lens on this and have no problem at all. It's also, in my opinion, the best looking camera on the market. You know, having a certain aesthetic of a camera is a big plus for myself. You also get two dual card slots and it also has a fantastic 
EVF that has really good resolution and it is nice and bright. So before I share my opinions why I'm selling the Sony a6700 for the Fujifilm X-T5 and where this camera will actually fit into my workflow and why my time here in Brazil I've been actually choosing to shoot on this camera over my Sony a7 IV and I haven't even used the Sony a6700 during my four week stay here in Brazil. I want to tell you guys how I learned photography online and became a full time photographer within six months with today's sponsor and that is Skillshare. What I love about Skillshare is that they have curated high quality content into categories. So a curated list of classes to take you from beginner to advance and learning photography skills, lighting techniques and camera settings online and then going out with your camera and practicing is definitely the fastest and most efficient way to learn photography and filmmaking. And then if you guys want to start making money with photography, you can pick up a learning path. So you'll learn from seasoned professional creators, giving you the practical guidance of navigating client contracts, pricing your work, email etiquette, and even taxes. I've personally been watching Ali Al Dal to maximize my productivity and my organization as those are massive goals for me this year to be more consistent here on YouTube. So if you want to invest in yourself and meet your goals, learning online is the best way and Skillshare is the best and largest online learning community for creators and if you're quick the first 500 people that click the link in the description down below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video and let's jump into the three main reasons why I'm selling the Sony a6700 for the Fujifilm X-T5. And the first reason is that Sony is just too good and this might sound ironic, but the Sony a6700 just has no character to it. The autofocus and the image quality is just fantastic. You really can't complain about that, but it's just like my work cameras. And for my creative work, it's just boring to use and doesn't fit the overall aesthetic that I'm trying to achieve. I've also loved using the tilt out screen as I've always been a flip out type of screen guy so I can see myself while recording but for photography a flip out screen is definitely better. The second reason is I don't want to travel with my professional cameras and that's the whole reason why I bought the Sony a6700 for here on YouTube and to travel with. But what I quickly realized and learned is that I don't want to be taking out my APS-C lenses as I use them for work with the FX30. And during the last four weeks here in Brazil, I've been picking this Fujifilm X-A5 over my Sony cameras purely for the fact that I'm not financially attached to this camera. The last point is the film simulations inbuilt into Fujifilm cameras. And this is something that I've never really had a use case scenario and I've never really cared about. And these film simulations are definitely not gonna stop me from editing my photos as I really do like editing my photos with my presets. They are linked in the description down below, by the way. And this film simulation does actually look quite similar to my preset but I enjoy changing my exposure and white balance in post. It's a massive inspiration for me while shooting to seeing what the final image might look like. And since taking this XA5 out everywhere to nights out, to the beach, to hikes and trails with friends, I can quickly just download the photos straight from the camera to the phone and airdrop these photos for my friends to enjoy on the day. So when I get back to Australia, I'll be sadly selling the Sony a6700 for the Fujifilm X-T5 and I'll be actually picking up the 18mm f1.4 from Fujifilm and I'm also looking to buy the Viltrox 27mm f1.2 lens. And that will be my dedicated photography kit that I'll be taking everywhere I go for my travel and also just taking photos of friends and family for special moments. So guys, let me know in the comment section, do you guys think I'm making a mistake? Am I wrong to have two camera systems? I'd like to hear your opinions. Give me some ideas of some lenses to try out and we'll see you in the next one.